From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Welcome to this Cube Conversation. I'm Lisa Martin. Today, talking with the co-CEO of MemSQL, Raj Verma. Raj, welcome back to the Cube. Thank you, Lisa. Good to see you again, as always. You as well. So we're living in a really strange time, right? There is disruption coming at us from every angle. We're used to talking about disruptors and technology as technology um, innovations like cloud, for example, but now we've got this other disruption, this catalyst for more disruption in COVID-19. I wanted to ask you though, was we see so much changing in the business world for long storied businesses filing for chapter 11. What, why do companies get disrupted and how can they actually become, how can a company become a disruptor? I think disruption is a tale of innovation, uh, really. Uh, innovation from the incumbent or lack thereof um, and, um, and the fact that, you know, incumbents uh, become a lot more inward focused. They become uh, more about doing more of what got them to be successful, more process focused and outcome focused. And the disruptors are essentially, again, all about innovation and all about solving the customer's problems for today and for tomorrow. So I do think disruption is at its very core, uh, two uh, tales of innovation, one cautionary and the other sort of legendary. And we see that in the Valley all the time. You know, we see the, the favorite innovators of a decade ago uh, just um, limping along now and just being completely leapfrogged by the innovators of today. And that's really what the Valley is known for. Um, I do think that a big part of being a disruptor or being disrupted, as I said, you know, two, two sides of the same uh, sort of coin um, or a double-edged sword really, is uh, that for a disruptor, it's all about challenging the status quo. And to be effectively able to challenge the status quo, you need a team which is united in, uh, in purpose and in passion about uh, waking up every morning and uh, trying to, you know, as I said, challenge the status quo and not accept uh, just because things were being done the way they were being done. And that's what tomorrow should be. Um, and I think that's, that's really important. And I think there is a third ele element to being disrupted or, you know, aiding the disruptors, which is <clears throat> a catalyst event of, uh, of any sort uh, that might be. You know, it was the internet for Sun. I mean, Sun really called itself the network is the computer, one of my favorite companies. And, you know, Scott uh, McNeely is someone that I greatly admire and I've got to know over the years. And uh, they were preaching this gospel for 15 years. And then the internet hit and they just went, they became a rocket ship. Um, you know, Cisco, the same thing happened. A lot of companies and, you know, one in particular that we even worked for together, Lisa, got completely disrupted and blindsided by the cloud. Um, I do believe that one such disruptor right now, or one such catalyst which will disrupt business, and you alluded to that a little while ago, is COVID-19. And, um, and the data deluge or the, the tsunami of data that accompanies it. Um, you know, I was just talking to a friend and he said, you know, we are now living really in 2023. Uh, COVID-19, four months of living in COVID-19 has kind of propelled us three years forward in terms of the problems that we had three years to solve. We need to solve it now. And, um, and I think, yeah, the innovation, uh, a team that challenges the status quo and a catalyst is what disrupts companies and what aids disruptors. You brought up a really good point though, that there's such a huge component of the team to be able to not just react quickly, but be creative enough uh, and confident enough to challenge that status quo. There's a lot of folks who are very comfortable in their swim lanes. MemSQL has been a disruptor in the database space, but I think that team that you hit on is really essential. Without that and without the right folks really focused together, the, the disruptors are going to be disrupted. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, I think I often say at town halls or in private meetings that we are in the talent business. The, um, we are only as good as our team is. No if, and, and buts about it. If you're not, um, you know, united in purpose and, and mission, have immense diversity of thought, and 
be okay to change our minds when when presented with empirical evidence of um, something different. We will never succeed. We will never disrupt. Right. I think majority of majority of the population wakes up and looks for evidence that further um, makes them comfortable in the prejudices and the biases that they have. Um, now, whether that's in your professional life or in your personal life, that's majority of the population. That's why, um, you know, majority of the population does not innovate. If you have the courage to say that I was wrong, that uh, the status quo is just not enough, there is a better way out there. It's hard, but there is a better way out there. And that it's going to add phenomenal value to our customer base, to the world at large. Uh, that's the kind of people that uh, we are looking for and we are very lucky to have. And if you are one of them, and if you really do want to make a dent in the database uh, universe, uh, I, I know a company. So give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> well, challenging the status quo is hard, like you said, because getting up every day and just assuming things are going to be the same and align with your thought process, that's easy. But being willing to, as you said, be courageous is a whole other ball game. And as right now, data from yesterday is too late. You know, not only are we living in an on-demand culture, but now with the disruption, the microbial disruption, data from yesterday isn't good enough to help solve tomorrow's problems. Neither is yesterday's technology. How are how is MemSQL helping your customers even break the status quo? Lisa, that's, uh, that's really most of the conversations I tend to have with CIOs and CEOs. And um, given the digital work environment that we live in, there is a lot more availability because of lack of travel and other uh, social obligations. So you know, I, I have a number of these conversations with CEOs and CIOs on a weekly basis. And one of the things that most CEOs and CIOs ask for is, Raj, how can I get the now, now? Um, as I was saying that, you know, this COVID-19 crisis, so as to speak, or event, has um, really spurred and catalyzed a lot of these digital innovations and something that could wait for, you know, another year, another two years, maybe, or even three years needs to be done now. And um, the need for the now has never been greater. Uh, whether it be the responsiveness of your AI ML tools or how close can we actually put a transaction to your AI ML layer for near real-time or rather real real-time insights as to what's going on in the business. Because the one uh, data point that you have which can help you make informed decisions in this digital world is data. So how do you do it at speed? How do you do it at scale? How do you do it in a flexible environment? Is the need for the hour. Now, another aspect that they talk about is, don't give me a fancier mousetrap, as my CPO, uh, the gentleman that we just hired from Google BigQuery, is one of the founding members and uh, had their engineering and product management team. And, and he actually put it really well. He said, um, you know, I haven't come here to build a fancier mousetrap. I've come here to build a novel, new way of solving a customer's data problems and delivering the now uh, when, when the customer needs us, as I said, in the fastest, most economical, flexible, secure manner. Now, though that is, in my opinion, the biggest need for the hour and someone who can deliver that, um, is, is going to be extremely successful in, uh, in my humble opinion, because let me ask a question of any CIO or CEO or whoever is watching here, that if we could say that we would juice up your AI ML dashboard reports, um, you know, real-time dashboards, 4X in four weeks, how many of you are gonna say no? How many of you are gonna say that from a response time of 15 minutes, if we could give you sub-second response times, like we've done for many of our vendors in the last uh, three to four weeks, how many of, of, the, of you all would say, no, I, I'd stick to my slow uh, dashboard? And that's what we are enabling, um, Lisa, and that's why I am 
superbly excited about where we are and uh, where we are headed. So companies that can work with innovative technology like MemSQL, whether it be a retailer or a telco, for example, or a healthcare organization, the companies that are going to be able to, to get the data, to get the now now, are those the next disruptors? Beyond doubt, beyond doubt. Um, and, and we are already seeing, like you and I were talking about uh, before the show, that we are seeing a lot of bankruptcies, amazing amount of bankruptcies for companies who did not have the infrastructure uh, for delivering the now now. And, um, and they essentially were feeding their own prejudices and biases by saying, oh no, I made the decision on Oracle 15 years ago and I'm just going to stick by it because they're the biggest, baddest database player. Well, they couldn't solve the now problem. And uh, guess what happened to your company? And uh, those who were courageous enough to say, yeah, it solved the problems of yesterday, but we are in unprecedented times and it will take um, a very hard and deep look um, and, and something which will shake up the status quo to be able to deliver the tomorrow for our company. For our company to see the sunrise of tomorrow, we have to be courageous enough to question our prejudices and bias. And those are the companies with, that will not only survive, but they will thrive. Uh, we were talking to, you know, naturally I have a lot of conversations with investors here and, you know, the, the SaaS technology area is the new gold now. I mean, that's one segment of the market that's held up because that is what is enabling the courageous enterprises to deliver um, the tomorrow and help the employees and their customers see the sunrise of tomorrow. And, um, and those who don't, they just don't see the sunrise tomorrow. I know working and talking with customers is near and dear to your heart. How do you help businesses? Like you mentioned, a whole bunch of really big brands have filed for Chapter 11 recently. Brands that we've all known for decades and decades. Maybe it's, you know, team that's just not innovative enough. Like you said, Oracle, we're going to use it. How does MemSQL come and how do you, when you're talking with those customers who might be on the brink of not surviving, how do you help them from a, like a thought diversity perspective to understand what they need to do to not just survive, but thrive? Yeah, uh, the, you know, I wouldn't like to take too much of the credit here that we can be saviors of companies. Um, the company and the executive team needs to know their why. And we can deliver the how. And we can deliver it faster, cheaper, in a more secure fashion. But the courage of saying that if we don't change, we will die and we will not see the sunrise of tomorrow has to come from the organizations. And, and I think that's the starting point. And we give them enough empirical evidence that there is a better way out there. Uh, we were working with a very, very large um, you know, electronic retailer and uh, for their retail telemetry, as, um, as you pointed to, uh, they could only get telemetry of their stores all over the world on a on a everyday basis. I think they ran their report every 16 hours, and that was just not enough for them. And they've got a very involved CEO, and they wanted sub second response times. And uh, the team actually thought it was not possible, and continued to say that to the executive team, till they came across us, and we showed that the 16 hour time difference was now 0.8 seconds, and they jumped on it. And um, now their, their dashboards are powered by MemSQL. And instead of running reports every 16 hours, they run it uh, every second. If you so want, you can query your retail telemetry every second. And those kind of courageous asks and a team saying, just because I made a decision two years ago, um, now is the time actually for those teams to say, it was a different world. I made the right decision two years ago. But in the new world, there is a better way of doing things and better way of securing our future and delivering the now. And uh, that's where we come in and we've uh, helped a number of customers. And, uh, and I actually urge uh, a lot of the organizations who are looking for the now to, to have that introspective conversations internally. So how do you, how do you advise companies, whether it's your prospects, your customers, or even them to build a team that's poised for disruption? Is it generational? Is it more than that? I, I don't think it's generational at all. I don't think it's an ageist issue um, of, uh, of 
you know, seeing the future or having the ability to see corners. I think it's, uh, it's ultimately, and I know I'm using this term a lot, it is, um, I've always felt that very bright, intelligent, self-aware individuals have the ability to question their own prejudices and biases. And, uh, and it requires courage and intelligence and all the rest of it. But I think that is the key. There isn't that much more. Um, and what greater impetus or reward would a company want than survival? Uh, <laughs> sometimes uh, survival is a, a great impetus for innovation. And we are seeing that happen a lot. And, uh, and those that aren't then don't, don't do that. However, that, that said, uh, teams which have focused from early on on diversity uh, of thought um, on on you know different perspectives, uh, just their DNA is more open to you know challenging the status quo, and and that's where the, the organizations who've had the right cultural values of it's okay to question the status quo, it's it's okay to have diverse opinions even though they drive a knife through your uh, prejudices and biases, both at an organizational level and at an individual level. That DNA uh, helps companies is coming in and paying off, um, you know, in spades because that cultural thought, you know, think tank is driving the the new age of innovation and in doing so survival. So I do think that companies that invested in the right cultural values. Uh, the right virtues uh, that's paying off in spades and i think that that those teams we are seeing uh, and those organizations with that kind of a culture um, are um, are jumping on the bandwagon of questioning the status quo of um, using the technology of tomorrow to solve tomorrow's problems and not be steeped in heritage and uh, we will see those companies and we can see it already who they will be uh, naturally we can't mention them but um, they would survive. And we are clearly seeing a whole host of other companies who are so um, still um, sort of steeped in justifying that their original thought was the right thought. And I'll bet my bottom dollar they don't survive. Last question for you. How have you been able to build, you and your, your executive team at MemSQL, been able to build that diverse culture and how has it shaped your leadership style yeah um uh, you know I, I don't think we've it it's not as if we've gotten there it's a constant journey um, and it's just something which starts off by saying you know we are not going to have a know-it-all culture but we are going to have a learn-it-all culture you know we we are going to listen and and we're going to think <laughs> consider and respond uh, for me diversity was um, a given, you know, I, I sort of um, grew up around diversity, uh, some of the influences of my life that have made me um, the person I am today um, came from um, a, a viewpoint of, uh, you know, of, uh, of women, you know, so I've had some very, very um, strong um, female influence in my life. And um, as I've said repeatedly, I wouldn't have been who I am or half the person I am today without that influence. So. For me, it's a very natural sort of progression to have that diversity of thought and opinion as a, um, you know, weaved into the very fiber of any organization that I've been a part of. And, um, and we do that in a manner where we, it's not just good enough to say we will hire the best candidate. I, I don't think that is the way that you are going to sort of address the historical imbalance, uh, which has resulted in very single-threaded thought cultures in, in organizations. We, we make it a point that at the top end of the funnel, of course, we'll hire the best candidate, right? However, at the top end of the funnel, we almost uh, you know, legislate that there has to be um, X percentage of candidates uh, who are um, you know, uh, diverse candidates, uh, you know, candidates from minority uh, minorities. And, um, and then let the best you know, candidates sort of uh, get qualified. And also, if there are two candidates who are you know, equally qualified, then you know, we encourage uh, someone with a lot more diversity and uh, you know, uh, to, to come on to the team. And uh, ultimately, that drives a lot of um, 
uh, thought leadership in the organizations and helps us manage our blind spots a lot better. And I have so many examples of that. Uh, the, the amount of innovation that happens because of these working groups, which are very diverse working groups, is, um, is just uh, you know, unmeasurable. And uh, we've been extremely clear about the fact of what candidates would uh, survive, thrive, and enjoy being at MemSQL. And, and those are the candidates uh, who are here to build something, build something for the ages, uh, do right by each other and by the customer. You know, we don't accept the unacceptable, challenge the status quo. If you feel strongly about something, stand up and your voice would be heard. Um, you know, just, um, just, just because things were being done a certain way doesn't mean it has to be done the same way. And, um, and I'm very proud, very, very proud of uh, the team that we, are, uh, we have built and the one that we are building. And, uh, you know, it's a, a purpose, uh, you know, a team that is united in purpose and very diverse in thought. And um, I, um, I have I've become a better person and a better professional with uh, all the diversity of, uh, of thought and the learnings that we've had as a consequence of that over the last uh, you know, year and a half or so. And uh, that is the cornerstone of uh, what we are building here at MemSQL. And Lisa, you and I work with one such individual who's just made an uh, unbelievable difference in, um, uh, in our organization. Uh, and lastly, I think, uh, you know, just on a personal note, uh, the diversity angle becomes that much closer to my heart. I'm, uh, you know, father of two uh, lovely girls uh, and two lovely boys. Uh, and uh, I, I just, you know, it's personal to me that if I can't leave the tech industry a better place for my daughters, then I found it, for that matter, even for my sons. But I think, uh, you know, the daughters had a historical, um, you know, a debt to pay. Um, then I don't think I would have really achieved the success that we are, uh, we all as a team are hoping for. So, yeah, uh, this is extremely personal. And thank you for sharing all your insights. You tell a really interesting story. Uh, you know, we started talking about disruption, disruptors, how not to be disrupted, how to become a disruptor. And really some of the things that you talk about, it all really kind of comes down to the team, the DNA of the organization and that thought diversity, being courageous to break the status quo. Raja, I wish we had more time because we could keep going on this, but thank you for sharing your insights. It's been a really interesting conversation. Thank you, Lisa. It's been great to see you. Stay safe and well. Likewise, for my guest, Raj Verma, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching this CUBE Conversation.